I am in Austin, Texas, and I worked for a vignette corporation for um, about five years in the early days. I saw it grow from 50 employees to 3,200 and then downsized back until I was gone. Um, and after I left, I left voluntarily to do some um, kind of research on my own. I was going to write some uh, nonfiction. Some, I wanted to write something on practical philosophy about why it's important to think about uh, important issues. And I uh, found that very difficult, so I tried to make it into a fictional tale that uh, illustrated those, those issues. But uh, about a year ago, I met someone who had an interesting idea that meshed with a lot of my ideas. So we've been uh, working together and trying to put something on together for consulting and possibly to produce a product. So it's a, and it has to do with social software, so um, very interesting and related to the stuff that's going on at the Futurist Conference. Cool. Well, we've been asking everybody the same sort of general question to start. What do you think? is in store for our future? Um, well, I, the, I think that the, the, uh, the singularity is only a singularity from the perspective of this side of the equation. As it starts, I, I think that uh, that exponential curve, we're always at the elbow because it's, it just depends on what, what part of it you're looking at. And um, so I think it will continue to be, um, I think we're already starting to see um, the acceleration as the technologies increase really rapidly. Um, I think the biggest issue is the, just the uh, sheer amount of content that's coming out right now with everybody having blogs. Um, not only the, the um, explosion of content, but the explosion of tools to produce content. Uh, just uh, last month I was watching the Ruby on Rails demo online, which is an incredible application to do a um, database backended application real time and somebody can go up in a demo situation in front of a conference and within 15 minutes actually write an application that has a, a database as a back end, updating it live as they're going. And uh, so the ability to create applications is just gonna, that's gonna fuel people being able to do that. So, it, so just that explosion of content um, means that we're gonna have to have a better way of filtering it all. And I think that the, that uh, Google has done a pretty good job of, uh, of doing that in a, in somewhat of a way, but I have a, I have a concern, um, and it's pretty close to what I'm working on with my friend. The concern is that um, what it's not pointing out is what's not there. So when you do a search on Google, it will point out what's been written about. It'll start to point out um, what's been blogged about, um, not quite yet what's been emailed about or um, chatted about. Mm -hmm. But what it won't do is show you the holes of what Here's, here's a topic, here's a topic, there's something in between that would be an interesting thing to look at, but there's, but we don't, um, but it's not, it's not available. I mean, it's, there's not a point, a data point to point to, so it can't really return that search. Does that make sense? Yeah, how, how would you, how would you do so, that? So, um, I, I, the software we're working on is attempting to create um, a system of orientation similar to a latitude and longitude system and a geographic uh, metaphor, so that you can n not only name the cities and, point and talk about the points of reference, but also talk about points that are farther away. The problem in the web space is that that's not, it's not an absolute system of reference. It's a relative system of reference. And, um, so it's, and it's also um, extremely dynamic rather than as static as geographic location. But I think there are systems for being able to do that. One way to think about um, making a, uh, an attempt at doing that would be to pay attention to what sorts of questions people are asking on Google. What are people asking for and not having their, their searches satisfied? And is there any correlation to that? So what interest um, is there that people are looking for and not finding? And sort of create that as a, a whole, in a sense you start to see the boundary of, oh, here's something that the closest thing is far away in all of these places, but really it's kind of, there's a black hole in this area. Um, the more that people do that, the more, that the more people are able to um, put their attention there, the more they can kind of create something in that space. So what happens once you know, something like Google finds out, <laughs> hey, there's nothing about this? You mean um, as far as the application? How, how, would, they, how would they go about um, illustrating that or I'm reacting to it? Reacting to it. Um, I think that, um, well, I don't know if Google would do anything in particular. I mean, right now it seems that what they're doing, they don't really care about the way that um, 
they don't care what people do with the information that they find. All they really want to know is the algorithm. And they can use that for advertising and whatever, but they don't, as far as I understand, they're not really using that um, in, a, in an explicit way to, to guide, um, to take advantage of it. They're really you know, just using the algorithms to make sure that, that people get the best results that they can. And so this would be the same thing. It would be the people's interest. The way that I envision um, something working, and this is, this is an approximation of what I'm thinking, it's not exactly, um, but, it, but I think it would be functionally um, appropriate, would be if I opened a Google session, if I was able to create a session to, to establish some context. This is what I'm trying to do. These are the keywords that I'm using. Have kind of a running log of storing those keywords and the, and the pages that are returned. Keep a track of which ones I actually click through to and how much time I spend on each of those. Um, and, and then, if other people have done similar searches, I can see what their keywords are. Also, um, implicitly add delicious tags with those keywords so that, I'm, so that I'm getting a sense of what it is, that, a context of what it is that I'm trying to do. This isn't really necessary for stuff that's very relevant. Like if I'm, doing, if I'm a high school student, I'm doing a, a research paper on the Mars mission, that returns pretty, pretty relevant data up to the top. But it's really useful for the situations where I'm looking for something that's very difficult to find information on, and I want to possibly collaborate with other people who are doing similar difficult searches, mm -hmm. pushing the edge of what we know. Um, and at that point, those, those things become apparent, and as, if I can collaborate with other people who are creating similar sessions, looking for a context for which there doesn't seem to be very many relevant hints, then maybe we can get together and, and create something like that. Um, there's a um, part of the thought of what that looks like um, is similar if we step back before eBay happened. When eBay um, was, was brought out, what we did was create, we, we um, created an efficiency in the market to allow anybody to sell anything to anybody else who wanted it. Um, on, the, on the flip side of it, it's a little bit more difficult to say, I want to offer for sale anything that I have to anybody who might want to buy it. So it works well for saying, I have an item for sale, um, how much will you pay for it? It's a little bit harder to say, I want something to buy, because there aren't that many people who are out searching for, um, searching for sellers is that right? Yeah. I, have, I, have, I want this and looking for a buyer, you know, for instance, I, I want to I, um, I play music, I want to play guitar. And I want to buy a cheap used guitar, somebody who doesn't have, has one in their closet. I don't want to buy one that's somebody, a musician who's acti actively selling it. I want to hit the people, the mother whose son gave up his guitar and she's just trying to get rid of it. Rather than giving it to Goodwill, I want to, I want to be able to hit her interests. Um, but there's a little bit of a, a, of a difficulty in matching those people up. Um, so, but there's something, you know, matchbend.com is actually something that does something a little bit more like that. It really tries to create an efficiency for people on both sides of the equation. Um, it's also what I'd be interested in seeing creating an efficiency not only on buying and selling things, but on collaborating with ideas or just the idea with meetup. Meetup.com mm -hmm. is also something where it was trying to create a, an avenue where people could get together. But what I noticed is the friction of the process, the, the, the critical mass um, that you had to overcome in order to make that be successful was too great for it to actually work out. Um, and they compounded the problem by charging too much for it and, and they never got the model right. Um, and I think I'm gonna see, we're going to see as the proliferation of tools to, to do this kind of collaboration increase that the price will essentially go to zero. So that just like the transaction costs for co conducting eBay auction kind of go to zero um, or very low. What, what were you looking to learn coming to this conference? Um, I wanted to, specifically, I'm, I'm looking to how to, how to get uh, funding for the project that we're doing. Um, we've been working kind of behind the scenes for a long time. Um, I, uh, I had sort of dismissed futurists a while back because I thought they were a little too geeky. Um, not that I'm not pretty geeky myself, but, um, but I thought that they were a little too pie in the sky and not, uh, not in, uh, focused enough on real world stuff. But last year, when I saw Kurzweil speaking at the World Future Society, I went ahead and bought the annual proceedings, and um, then I saw him speaking here as well this year. And I missed the World Future Society uh, session last year, but I, I wanted to catch this and, and see him. I haven't seen him speak before, so that was the thing. That was the thing that drew me here. Um, but um, I'm finding that um, that the that the the content, uh, especially with the dual topics of artificial intelligence and intelligence amplification, are extremely relevant. Um, 
it also helped me clarify what it was that I was what it was that I was trying to work on. Um, I was having a difficult time expressing to people because the pro the problem that I'm trying to solve is a pretty broad one. Um, but in listening to the conversations, what essentially came out of it, the way that I would put it is, um, with the system that we use already, um, our our brains work on an attentional um, amplification system. So what things rise to the level of my attention that I need to pay attention to, most of it gets filtered out, but something that requires attention gets raised up. And then once something's raised to my attention, my in intentional amplification of what to do about that, my decision-making process about what to do about that. And I think that what we'll see moving into the future is um, people will um, have that, that process distrib distributed. So that our intentional um, thing, it's already happening somewhat right now with RSS feeds and things like that for blogs, but the problem is that um, it still is too much. We're not, it's, the filters aren't good enough yet to say, I don't want everything that you say, and I don't want the keyword search of everything that's written, everybody who's written anything about this topic, but I want some, some quality metric on these specific kinds of things with this context that I have. I have a very specific question about this topic, and I want to zero in on that, so. Anything we haven't talked about that you think is important? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that, that's about it. Great, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.